In my opinion, these three sectors have a high chance of making its next leg up for this coming week. And if you manage your risk, you have a very, very good chance of you know, getting a good to risk to reward ratio on these trades. Within this sector, I have picked out three stocks or maybe four for you guys to potentially swing trade for this coming week. So hopefully you'll be able to get some trade ideas as well as learn some technical analysis. Well, I'm not gonna overpromise and say that no, these three stocks are 100% gonna go up, but rather these stocks have the best setups and coupled with good risk to reward ratio in my opinion. And in doing so, I also have the secondary objective of trying to educate you a little bit more on risk management as well as technical analysis. And if you're able to make my risk to reward ratio, <coughs> I mean like to dislike ratio, a thousand to one. It will be absolutely amazing for you to do that and as well as a reward for you guys, here's a picture of me, a picture of me. <laughs> And also, Interactive Brokers, the broker that I'm using mainly for my trades, are giving out free stocks, but more of that later. All right, first, an overview of contents. I'm gonna talk about the top three swing trade stocks, then I'm gonna talk about the update for last week's picks because I like to stay accountable to you guys. And lastly, I'd like to give you some templates, some trading templates for you, you know, to take away from this video. So I hope it will be valuable to you guys. So with that said, let's get on with the first stock. All right, now we are in our favorite place, the charts. First, let's take a look at the three sectors that I thought that have a lot of potential for the stocks, which is the first one is actually looking at the consumer discretionary area. You can see that it has taken a dip, but I showed some strength above this moving average. So I think there's a lot of chance that it can actually move up the next leg for this coming week. Then the next one we're gonna look at is actually materials. Okay, materials also recently have rebounded from that massive sell-off, okay, which suggested that it might be manipulation around this area and now it's consolidating near the $84 level which signifies there's a lot of support in this area which might move the next leg higher. And the third sector we're going to look at is actually in the communication sector where you can see that it's always been respecting these two moving averages, right? The, the blue one which is once in a while touched and the green one which is always sometimes violated but often rebound back to its all-time highs again. So again, we can look to see if the momentum is strong around this $83 level to go back to its all-time highs and continue the trend upwards. All right, and the first stock I'm gonna talk about for today is actually a BGFV, okay, which is Big uh, Five Sporting Goods Corporation. And this company is a company in the consumer discretionary space, all right? And this company, right, have actually made some, um, a little bit of a dip for quite some time already, okay, from its all-time highs of $35, right now it's sitting at $23-ish. So, this company have pretty decent uh, risk to reward ratio in terms of a trade right now because it's sitting right at this support level over here, okay, as well as, you know, this company is um, looking at its fundamentals a little bit, it is trading at a reasonable valuation, decent growth for the future, okay, and it has a lot of very, very strong relative strength uh, in accordance to the market. So this company, my first one, I'm gonna talk about the thesis on this, right? Um, this is what you wanna look at, right? This is the LATE format. My old subscribers will know this. So again, if you wanna stop and pause and take a screenshot of my trading plan, please do so right now, okay? And let's take a look at my thesis on this company, right? Why am I choosing this company? Okay, first, I like to see that there's three bottoms over here. So one, two, and three areas over here, which has always been rejected. So again, three is the magical number that I always look when I want to see a bottom. Because if a bottom is rejected three times, okay, and it's always rebounding to a previous high around this level over here, you can see that it touched once, twice, thrice, and even tr violated the $25 level once. Okay, it's showing some strength to try to break to the upside. Most of the time, this is signifying a reversal. So this is what I like to look for. Why am I looking at this company? Okay, the second reason is when I look at its fundamentals, okay, I want you to do more research on this so that you have more conviction when you want to swing trade this company. Okay, this company is decently doing growth. They have a high sales ratio. They have uh, very, very good sales that's coming in, good earnings, okay, decent valuations. So again, I think that, you know, when bigger uh, money is looking at this kind of companies, right, they might think that, hey, okay, this company is pretty decent. They want to buy in to get a stick in this uh, small but fast growing company. And this company is a small cap company that is less than a billion dollars. Okay, next let's look at mm. all right, next let's take a look at the entry price, all right? Where I look to you know buy in at this area. So again, any area around the twenty twenty one dollar level is a gem, okay, it's a gem to buy in at this company. All right, let's take a look at this area over here a little bit closer. Okay, so I would suggest anywhere around $20, okay, $20, $20 near this resistance area, 
the support area over here is a decent buy zone. Okay, so you look at this line over here, the line I'm drawing. Okay, anywhere around twenty dollars forty one cents, where it's touching. Okay, all the way to the, the the resistance area around here presents a decent strong support for this company. This area from $20 to $22.46 is an area of value which you want to you know, get in. And this is the entry price that I think you know, has a lot of potential. Okay, If you can get in somewhere around here, that would be great. Okay, If you want to, this is the 4-hour time frame. You can even go down to the 1-hour time frame. But 1-hour time frame, is, I, I suggest that to be the minimum. Okay, Don't go lower than that because uh, there will be too much noise if you are going too low. So if you go down a lower time frame, you can actually use a lower time frame, which is 1 hour to even time a better entry you know, to enter to the further upside. And that's my entry price for BGFC. I mean BGFV. Next, let's talk a look at our profit target and stop loss. Okay, profit target, okay, we want to look at is here. All right, now let's take a look at my profit taking area as well as my stop loss area. So profit taking area I like to see is somewhere, okay, around the next resistance around here where there's a lot of selling pressure uh, right around here. Okay, here onwards, I would say there's a lot of selling pressure from uh, all the way from $28 all the way to here. Okay, we can see there's many, many red bars over here. You can see there's one red bar, two red bars, three red bars, four, five. A lot of selling pressure right at the twin, nearing the $30 level. So again, right when you hit around $27, you might want to start to take some profits off the table. Okay, and where is my stop loss level? Where I want to put my stop loss? So stop loss, I would want to put somewhere okay near the bottom over here which is around this area this is my stop loss area why is that so okay because you want to you know take a little bit of breathing room right for this stock itself because if your stock your stop loss is very very tight right very much often than not you know the day okay you can spike down to the further downside and you know spike back up again and you will take out your stop loss and and you will not be stopped out of the trade you'll be stopped out of the trade and you won't be able to get to the further upside and that's actually not very good so we want to leave some space for that, okay? And if okay, the market intraday is feeling like it's, it's getting weak, it's gonna touch a stop loss, you can even exit manually using your own you know, mental stop loss that you have. Okay, and that's the stop loss and profit taking area for this stock itself. Next, let's talk about the expected holding time that we want to hold for this company, all right? So because we don't, we don't want to hold this company for too long itself as well. Okay, so the holding expected holding time for this company, I would say, okay, for a four hour time frame, okay, and I would want to look for around a uh, it's a four to five day hold for me, okay, to see whether it breaks to the further upside again if it gets rejected at the twenty five dollar level, okay. If it gets rejected at twenty five dollar level, okay, it starts heading back down again. I want to exit uh, as quickly as possible, okay. But if it shows signs of breaking up to the further upside, okay, then you know this may be actually a two week to three week hold for BGFC itself. Okay, next company, Roku, Roku, Roku. Okay, Roku is a company that you know, has a lot of main favorite among a lot of institutional investors uh, as well as the retail investors, okay? Because Kathy Woods of ARK Invest have been um, staking this company as one of its major holdings, okay? Even though recently it's been selling a little bit here and there, but after this massive dip, they have been buying back shares of Roku quite a little bit, okay? And that's good reason to be so because after this massive sell off, okay, you can see that always Roku comes back with a, a heavy, heavy, you know, uh, in increase back to the further upside whenever there's a huge sell off like this one. Okay, so you can see there's another huge sell off like this one. Okay, most likely people, hedge funds who are buying around here would want to buy again around this level. So let's take a look at the thesis on this. That's what's my thesis. Okay, and my entry price for Roku actually will be around this level. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, so my entry price currently, right, I would want to enter around here. Okay, I definitely wouldn't mind entering around this level. Okay, anywhere near the, the this level over here is a decent buy. $376 to $400 level is a decent buy itself. Okay, I would buy around here, but not, not more than this, right? So again, if it rallies up too much, too high, okay, then the risk to real ratio is not that good. Then I would want to buy in. Okay, so this level is around where I would enter uh, this stock itself, okay? And let's take a look at, you know, my profit target and stop loss for Roku. Okay, stop loss, okay, I would definitely uh, give it a little bit of space, okay, because it likes to spike in and out very rapidly. But again, this stop loss wouldn't be too loose as well, so it will be somewhere around here. This is my, my stop loss, okay? And profit taking area, where would it be? Where will it be? Okay, profit taking area definitely will be around this red candle over here where there's a major, major uh, selling pressure that's around here. So my selling area would be around this area. Okay, so again, from this, you can see that the risk to reward is definitely around two to one. Okay, it's from here to here, uh, according to where you enter and where you exit. Okay, but this is roughly my exit price as well as my entry price, as well as my profit taking and stop loss strategy. 
And last, you know, what is my expected holding time for this company? Okay, my expected holding time for this company will be a longer term trade, longer term swing, because you can see for one swing to happen, okay, this is like over the course of one, two, three, four, five, six days. And I would search, this will probably take around six to seven days for it to play out as well. If there's a little bit more volatility, it will take around eight days for this um, swing to be swing up. So this, you can expect probably a two week hold uh, for this company. So that is for Roku. All right, and last two companies I'm gonna talk about is actually ESI and MP, okay? And these two companies, okay, have pretty good potential as well. Both of them are in the material sector, which I mentioned that materials have a good chance, you know, of rallying even higher, okay, because after that massive dip, right? Okay, and a lot of companies, you know, are actually looking at these companies, you know, to, to snap them out at these cheaper prices before it goes back to its all-time highs. Okay, and MP Materials, you can see that, okay, same thing, it has been going on a ascending triangle over here, and if you can look at this, right? Okay, you can definitely see that there's an ascending triangle over here. Okay, you can see that it's forming to break out. So again, anywhere you can buy around this area, okay, would present a very, very good chance for it to break up to the further upside to maybe around $47. And your stop loss could be below the swing lows or previous swing lows around this level. Okay, below this, this swing low over here will be a decent area for you to sell off. Okay, and stop loss will definitely be around this level over here, so don't have to worry too much about that. Profit taking area around here as well. Okay, hence, okay, if you want to know about the expected holding time for this stock, okay, uh, you want to see, okay, for these kind of ascending triangles, you definitely want to, you know, wait for it to consolidate a little bit more before breaking out. So again, you can see each consolidation takes around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight candles to consolidate up. Okay, so you can expect around eight candles to the uh, double of that around 16 candles for it to break to the further upside because it needs some time to consolidate to squeeze up so you can expect you know this company will be holding from two to three weeks uh, if you want to take a longer swing uh, trade so this is all based on the daily time frame so again for daily time frame the advantages you know it may seem long okay but the thing is we don't have to keep micromanaging our, our positions we can let it kind of move along with the bigger trends okay we don't we're not trading in and out very rapidly and that's why we are swing traders we're not day traders so again if you like more faster action right then you i would suggest you know you trade the smaller time frame maybe like the one hour time frame or even shorter than that okay but again for me i like to focus on the daily time frame so my stocks most of the time are holding for a week or even more before i sell out okay and get my entire position out so this is how i risk manage you know even when i have have a job at the site and hello everyone all right so quick pause today let's talk a little bit more about interactive brokers and their promotion currently so if you open up a account with interactive brokers right now you will get a free stock and i will also get a little bit of referral commission so again you help the channel grow as well so if you wished to know try out different brokers and interactive brokers have one of the lowest rates uh, currently for options trading as well as it has now uh, free up its monthly inactivity fee so it's one of the best brokers out there in my opinion so again if you wish to check it out the links in the description below uh, right there as well as my newsletter link as well so go check it out right back to the video okay ESI same thing as well okay I want to do, let you do your homework on ESI because I don't want this company this entire video to be too long okay and I hope you guys enjoyed this video okay uh, here's exit strategy okay this is some of the trade templates that I have okay um, this is how and when I would personally exit out of a trade so again you want to read through this you could as well but I will end the video for today at this area so, that, so today we talked about BGF, BGFV, oh my god, I keep, I keep explaining and saying it, take it wrongly, okay, BGFV, uh, Roku, as well as ESI and MP Materials, both of them are decent as well. Okay, and let's take a look at last week's picks, okay, what happened to last week's picks? So, let's take a look at Convault, Convault is decent, okay, I entered around $75, okay, and it's currently, you know, I'm down, I'm like breaking even on this company, I'm not really moving much, okay, I'm setting my tight stop loss right below, okay, and waiting for it to break to the further upside, because you can see from this big dump over here, right, I do believe there's around 5% profit to be made from this company, so again, I'm holding for a little bit more, but if by next week it doesn't pop, I'm probably gonna be selling out of this company. So then just take their capital and move it to somewhere else. And next company is GTN. Okay, GTN was a pretty good trade itself. I saw a small dip and I took advantage of it and I entered around $21, $22. And right now it's giving me a profit around 3.3 for the week. It's pretty decent trade itself. And OMI itself, okay, I mentioned that no, it was earnings call on Tuesday. So again, I saw that I didn't enter on, on, on the date. I want to play a post earnings um, dip or post earnings, you know, um, increase. But after the dip and I read this um, earnings call, I didn't feel that it was a 
you know, they didn't really do that well on its earnings call. So uh, I decided to stay out of this company and look for some better opportunities for this week. And that's an update for last week's picks. Video, we talked about Roku, we talked about BGFV, and we talked about ESI as well as MP materials, as well as my trade plans itself. Well, if you like this video, then you will love the swing trade tutorial playlist that I've prepared for you. Okay, trade safe everyone, have a great week ahead, and I shall see you again in the next video everyone. Subscribe and like for more. Thank <laughs> you.